All right. Well, thank you for joining us. I am so excited to be kick off, kicking off 2014 with none other than my good friend, Rafael San Giovanni, uh, the digital and social media strategist over at RBB and one of the 30 uh, the most pe more, more, the most important people to watch, right, in 2013. Well, thanks I for the upgrade. You were named now, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for the upgrade. Most important. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, uh, 30, 30 to watch in PR in uh, 2013. Which was really nice. Excellent. I know you came up to, to my neck of the woods for that uh, ceremony. I did, yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, you're a heavy hitter in, in PR, but you know, one thing that I, you know, I, I had to have you and, and had you had to be my guest today because a while back you wrote this uh, amazing article about marketers and what they should know about Reddit, and that's I think one of, I want to start the the conversation today with that. Article mm -hmm. and just tell me, you know, what inspired you to, to write about Reddit? I, I'm a long time Redditor, so that's why that was uh, really uh, a, a fun article to read. But just tell me about what went into that, your inspiration, and you know what the article was about. Absolutely. Well, I got inspired to write about it because I love, like you, I'm a I'm a big time Redditor, and I would probably be ashamed to tell you how much time I spend a day <laughs> just browsing Reddit. Um, I guess just a quick primer on it before I go into kind of why I wrote about it in terms of like how it works for anybody who isn't familiar with it. Reddit is a basic giant social content aggregator. People go on this page, they build themselves as the front page of the internet, which is a really appropriate title when you consider that in 2012 they had, I think it was somewhere in the ballpark of 3 billion page views on their site, which is just, that's a crazy amount. And so um, I spend a lot of time on there, and you know, as a marketer, I always kind of have my eye on, on where it is that people go for their content and what it is that they like to do online. And so I was inspired to, to write about this in terms of what marketers can do um, to really leverage this space. And uh, as a Redditor myself, I found myself in a, in a unique position to have an opinion on it, being both, like I said, a Redditor and a marketer. Um, so. That's what got me started on it, and then I kind of wrote it as a two-piece, the first one being, why should marketers care about Reddit, and the second one being, what can marketers do on Reddit? And, and I, so, find that, I find that kind of uh, ironic, or you know, it's almost like an oxymoron, because I tend to get the feeling that Redditors don't like marketers too much, right? It, it's like, you know, how can you be both? So kind of give yeah. me uh, some background <laughs> on that, kind of how, how that was a unique uh, spot to be in. Yeah, because I would be the type of person who would be really opposed to someone trying to market to me on Reddit while I'm just browsing and doing my own thing. And I think the, the interesting bridge between those that I ultimately found and that I've kind of known you know, intrinsically since I've joined Reddit is that at the end of the day, it's about content. And as a PR practitioner, as a marketer, that's, what we, that's, that's our ballpark. We're all about creating content, and that is the future of public relations. It's all about the content and what you can produce for people to consume. And Reddit is nothing if not a repository for some of the most interesting content you'll find on the web. And I mean that in both a positive and the negative sense, because there's some, some really, really interesting stuff and some really not so interesting stuff. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. I was just browsing Reddit before I, I uh, joined this call here with you, and uh, the, the, the guy who leaked the Pentagon Papers, you remember him? As we speak mm -hmm. right now, he's doing an AMA and Ask Me Anything. Uh, Snowden. Or another guy? The, uh, um, Daniel Ellisberg. Okay. Uh, and actually the headline is, I am Pentagon Papers leaker Daniel Ellisberg. Edward Snowden is my hero. Ask me anything. Wow. And if you go there right now, you have a live line to this guy. You can ask him questions, and he may answer you back. President Obama was there not that long ago, and he crashed the website. He got the most views, I think, of any thread on Reddit ever. But, I mean, just, that's just a quick sign of the times in terms of, like, if the President of the United States is mm -hmm. going in and talking directly to people on, via Reddit, like, it's clearly reached a type of importance and critical mass that's worth noting. Um, but even at the end of the day, like, if you just go to the page right now, you won't see anything that is, like, immediately appealing because it's a whiteboard with a bunch of links. Once you start to dive in, you start to discover that not only is the content that people are sharing there interesting, the commentary and the conversations oh, yeah. that, that, you know, are bred from these topics start to come out, um, and they're all worth reading. Yeah. So, like, um, to go back to a quick background on Reddit, it's, the way Reddit works is that it's broken down into communities called Subbot, Reddit your homepage, that's kind of a catch-all for the most interesting and most upvoted and um, most commented on um, threads, right? 
and you have like the catch-all page and then you also have your own custom page because you can subscribe to different sub-communities like Today I Learned, which is about interesting facts that you learned for that day, AMA that you before, which is Ask Me Anything. You've got world news, politics, um, games, music. There are thousands and thousands of subreddits, and that's what makes it such so interesting. If you have a niche, it's probably there. They probably have a community mm -hmm. for it. And again, the, what makes it interesting is that there's that it's all about the content that's posted there. It lives and dies by that. There was a quote um, in in my blog post about a guy who said that there's so much content out there on the internet and that's why we need something like Reddit to sort through it and what's most interesting. So if you think about it, the people in there are already on the mindset of we want it. And as a marketer, as a PR practitioner, mm -hmm. that's a perfect audience for you to talk to. So I think you made you made some really awesome points. I mean your audience could be there and it probably already is because there are so many subreddits as a marketer you're, I mean we're always concerned about going where our audience is where, where is our target audience and if they're identifying hey I'm part of this subreddit automatically you know we know that's a community that we could potentially engage mm -hmm. them in and um, another kind of factor is that the community is discussing what is most interesting so together they're coming up and voting and downvoting upvoting mm -hmm. um, you know what what they feel is uh, should be the, the top content for that day or week or, or year. Yeah. So, so talk, talking about what gets upvoted, what what becomes interesting, and I know every community is different, but for the for the most part, you know, what makes content succeed on Reddit or for that matter, you know, anywhere else? Well, I, first of all, the golden rule of cats wins on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most popular ones is actually uh, it's it's a subreddit called Aww, A W W and that's it's not a surprise. It's just cats and dogs everywhere. Um, but besides those, if what makes content interesting there is a lot of what makes content interesting anywhere, which is it's shareable, it's interesting, it gets a reaction out of you. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what makes Reddit so interesting when you look at its threading system, and there are a couple of ways to sort it, but the default is to sort it by what they call best or like the most upvoted. Mm -hmm. So not only are stories that are posted upvoted and downvoted, the comments themselves are upvoted and downvoted. So if you look up a story that is about, you know, uh, let's say about like some new dental um, product or something like that someone happened to post, on the thread you'll very likely get someone who goes, hey, dentist here, and this is what I think about this or this is what's interesting about that. It's just like there's so many different types of people in there, and that's what makes there be such a good diversity of content. Um, in terms of what works, I mean, a lot of the same rules, it's funny, apply in terms of like what has succeeded um, you know, on social networks, which is visual storytelling and visuals first. Um, if you go to the homepage, more than likely at least 50% of it will be photos, things that people share. And even if it's just like, I saw this really interesting thing happen over here, um, or an animated GIF that someone found that day, um, but visuals still play very, very well. It's just it's immediate and it's and it's digestible, you know, from a content standpoint because there's so much of it. And you can just kind of go through. You can spend all day. There's like this, inter you know, inside joke amongst redditors about how much time you spend on Reddit throughout the day. Um, but on the other side of it, and I think this applies when you look at PR marketing too. You have one end of the spectrum that's like, here's short, digestible content, and then the other end, you have some more of the long-form stuff. Like right now, what's going on with the interviews, these real-time interviews, that's long. There are no visuals there. It's just you're getting, you're getting an inside scoop. You're getting a unique perspective that you never would have gotten before. So it's what makes content work on Reddit is that it's some of the most unique content that you can find, and that's why it builds itself as the front page of the Internet. Uh, this is not related to PR and marketing, but there was a perfect example of something like this was there is a subreddit uh, history, slash history, and someone had talked about, just posited, what would happen if Rome's naval army went up against a modern naval army? And this guy came in and he wrote this like sweeping narrative. Like he took it like a fiction novel and he wrote it out. That guy got a book deal wow. from those posts. And, and that's not the only story. I mean, I, I know, like for example, I think Oatmeal uh, comic. You know, he's, he's getting a lot of his content posted there and got multiple uh, business opportunities from that. And that's just you know a couple examples. There's a lot more that maybe we didn't catch or, or uh, you know slip our mind now. But there have been businesses that have started from uh, a good a good Reddit post. Apps. Um, Vice was another one when they started uh, their television program. They started uploading their 
um, their documentaries to YouTube for free, and they went straight to Reddit and started um, promoting it there because they knew they went to the specific subreddits that pertain like that they were posting, mm -hmm. and uh, shared it on there. Got a lot of good traction. Um, so the same principles of smart marketing apply to if you're considering marketing on Reddit because here here's the key thing, and you know this: the sensitivity and the filters for someone trying to market to you are so high that the, do, are you familiar with the term the hive mind? The hive mind, yes, of course. So like groupthink. Yeah. Yes, like groupthink. Groupthink will take over once something starts to pick up steam, like if something comes out and it's like, you, you know, as marketers, we're, we're all about transparency. If we've done anything on Reddit, we're like, you know, this is what I represent, this is where I work for, these are best practices. But there are people who will, you know, kind of mask themselves behind hidden accounts. I know that like, there was a rumor going around that when Microsoft was getting around to launching a new product, they went in there with hidden accounts, or not hidden accounts, but not transparent accounts, and slamming the competition. You know, Once that stuff starts to pick up steam and people pick up that you're, they're being marketed to or there's some kind of foul play at work, the hive mind takes over and they start they just bear down. On, on it's a lynch kind of mob. Stuff. It's a lynch mob on that on that particular brand, yeah. right? And it backfires like like crazy. And that's yeah. you know. And I I've heard other examples where brands have approached you know redditors that maybe have certain clouts or certain mm -hmm. influence and have pay try to pay them off. Say hey, maybe talk about this or post this piece of content. Yeah. So, so those are things that for maybe uh, other type of marketing tactics. You know, it might you know might you might pay a blogger to blog about you and do some of that blogger mm -hmm. outreach. But on Reddit, you know, it's you, you gotta. I guess play it very safe, right? Oh yeah, and I'm glad you brought that point up because you know how you know if you ever recommend it to a client, you wouldn't tell them you need to get on all the social networks. You need to get on Facebook, you need Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, because it's not a one size fits all, right? You would tell them let's analyze your brand, your audience, let's see where they are, and we'll recommend the best strategic approach for where you should be. And Reddit absolutely falls follows at those same principles. It's not a community for everybody. It can be a very hostile environment for some people um, if you're not careful. So treading lightly is absolutely recommended when you're talking about this because it's a very passionate community, which also makes it very fickle. You know, they'll quickly turn on a dime because that kind of hive mind takes over sometimes. Um, but on the flip side of it, like when your content does pick up steam. And it does resonate with your audience. There, oh man, it's just like the the. It's not just the reward, right? Of of getting you know like more traffic to what you're linking to. It's the conversations that kind of span from that. And you have in some cases, you know, you have a direct line to the type of audience that you're talking to. You know, mm -hmm. if you with the different subreddits. So it's just it's it's really powerful. And yeah. like anything, it's kind of like a nuclear reaction. Extremely powerful, but if it's mishandled, it will abs it can blow up. Yeah, I think one of the, the safest ways or, or the ways that I think you could get a lot of value from, from Reddit is is market research. Just listening. You know, just you know yeah, I, a lot of people I have seen they share a product and, and the um, you know people that are commenting share really good insight on how to make that product better. And as a market researcher, I'm like, man, where's that brand that you know could use this information to go and improve that toothpaste or improve that box design? Mm -hmm. And so I think from a market research standpoint, it could be really you know, not even getting engaged, but just listening and paying attention to the comments and what people are saying. You could get a lot of value uh, that way. Absolutely, you you hit it right on the head in terms of um, the focus being on listening. Like nobody should be jumping into something like Reddit. Without listening to what's there first, you know the, because it's it's its own it has its own lingo. You know they have their own kind of every subreddit has its own set of standards and expectations. Um, so if you just jump in there, you could immediately violate one of their rules of what is kosher and what's not kosher in that particular subreddit. So listening, just like you would recommend to any client in general, um, public relations or marketing strategy, listening to your audience. At the end of the day. It's about your customer, and if you're going to start considering marketing on Reddit, it's it's that same philosophy. Listen to what they're listen to what their interests are, what their expectations are before you just come in there and start broadcasting yourself. Um, and ideally, you want to engage with them too, right? That that would be that's why that's why AMA Ask Me Anything that subreddit is so incredibly popular. That's why all these celebrities, you know, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson was on there not that long. He's been there like three times. Um, there are just people come in droves, and people feed off of um, that interactivity and getting responsiveness. Um, and it's no surprise that going back to like what works, like if you go on AMA, 
you will see like I'm a bouncer at a Miami club, ask me anything, can be something that comes out because you're like, well, that's actually interesting and, and, and different and unique. And it's this like mm -hmm. this really interesting, insightful thread that where what before. Yeah, and I think Reddit just makes me uh, a fun person, or not so fun person, depending on, on how you uh, how you perceive it uh, in conversations, because you know they might share, hey, the latest viral video that, like my wife, she hates it. I'm, I'm a redditor because she's like, hey, come look at this cool video that I, I saw on Facebook. I'm like, babe, I, I read it already. I I, I already saw that, <laughs> and now yeah. I'm, I'm to the point that I gotta pretend, oh, that's awesome, even though I already saw it yesterday you know, right. on on Reddit. So it makes you in the know, right? I think that's a cool edge of being a redditor that you sometimes know trends before they even happen because you were part of starting that trend in a way. Yeah, things pick up a lot of steam, and oftentimes we'll go through Reddit first. And you know, honestly, like for talking, you know, um, you're looking at this realistically, it's for better and worse because, like, when um, Hurricane Sandy was happening, I went to Reddit to see what was going on. Um, because they had faster news updates than the new Twitter, believe it or not, because it was a threaded conversation that you could follow. It was like, I think at the time, like one thread surfaced to the top, which was like, I'm this guy, I'm in the Northeast, and I'm going to live mention what's going on. Like, I'm listening to the letters and uh, reporting what's going on. with the, Like, someone took it upon himself to do that. This happened a lot. Like, But on the flip side, there was an issue, I think, with... Um, when the Boston bombings happened, the Boston Marathon bombings, that they misidentified who the person and people just started swarming this person, like messaging them, and it was the, it was the wrong person ultimately. And that, that going back to that kind of hive mind mentality, that mob mentality, kind of took over, uh, and that was obviously wrong. That wasn't right. So there's so there's this balancing, and again, going back to the core of Reddit, it's all about. The, the passion that is in that community, and that's what makes it so 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 worth paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So to to summarize, you know, as a marketer, if I had like three do nots uh, as far as marketing or PR on Reddit, and three do's, what what would the three do nots be, and the three do's hmm. be? Let's think. Let's think about summarize. Okay, so three don'ts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, first is do not jump in without listening. Period. Um, for the reasons I've before, that you need to know what's going on on in that community. Um, don't lie. If there's one thing that people on Reddit, if I pointed out, like you put a dental product and a dentist will come out, you better believe if you start posting about something else, someone will know about it and they will find a way to research it a little bit more. And they and, could tag you, right? They, I mean, they could say I, I could because now we've uh, different depending on the, the Reddit suite enhancement uh -huh. or. Right, go. You could yeah. tag certain individuals. So if I, you know, see, oh, you're the dentist here. I tag you as a dentist. If you mm -hmm. pop up another conversation, say, oh, I'm a police officer, but I'm, I'm seeing a dentist tag right next to your name. I know that's mm -hmm. an outright lie. So you'll right. get caught. Exactly. Exactly. And another don't would be, don't spam. Don't okay. spam because, to your point, um, every account that's created there has a has a record. You know, anyone can go into your profile and publicly see what you've been up to, what you've been commenting on, um, and so forth. So, if you know, like, hey, wait a second, this guy keeps posting about this one particular, like, that's strange. Mm -hmm. And they look through your history and they see that it is in fact, and you haven't like publicly called this out. Get called out for it then. So transparency is still key, uh, which is a good segue into the dues that I'd say. Um, Definitely, if you're going to get involved, become a Redditor. And I mean that in the sense of getting an account site, learning how the system works for yourself, subscribing to some relevant subreddits for you or your client. Um, another one is to check frequently. Uh, because it's a democratic voting system that you know pushes up quality and pushes down certain quality, everything is changing in real time. Like At any given time, the homepage of Reddit, what's popular at the time, is going to shift like quickly. So you'll want to constantly be checking at it. And, uh, and three, and this kind of sounds like Internet 101 kind of a thing, like those articles that say, what does LOL mean? But in all honesty, it, it's really worth learning the lingo that's used in there that you know is used in other places too, like TLDR, too long, didn't mm -hmm. read, uh, or what a cross post is, what that means, what does AMA mean, which we discussed. When someone says OP, what are they referring to? What's karma? When someone says that they have a throwaway account, why would somebody do that? Um, so really getting familiar with the lingo in this particular case will make it seem like 
if you're jumping in and talking, you're not new around here and you're not just trying to figure this out. Like, I know that some people have had some backlashes against that. Um, you know, in the past, like Woody Harrelson, whoever his you know, PR people properly prepared him for this and he came into an AMA thinking, we're just going to talk about the movie that he was promoting at the time. And people started having conversations about him like, okay, you said ask me anything, so I'm going to ask you anything. And he was like, no, guys, let's, let's stay to talking about the movie. And they just flatlined from there. He just wasn't familiar with how the community worked, the kind of lingo that the people use. They didn't check it frequently enough to know what, you know, who had been there recently. There's no way he could have known that another celebrity, I think maybe Tom Hanks around that time, had just had like an amazing uh, AMA there. Because um, they, just, they just weren't on the pulse. Reddit is one of those communities that you have to keep your finger on the pulse at all times to really really uh, understand it, appreciate it, make it work for you, and, and make you as a, as, as, a, as a marketer work for them. Awesome. Well, Raphael, I mean, these are awesome tips. And a lot of the, the don'ts, I mean, I, I took note that they're, I think they apply to all of marketing now. I mean, we're evolving to the point that, you know, we have to be more transparent if we want to succeed in marketing. You know, we can't spam. You can no longer send out, you know, a lot of mass emails. I mean, they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. They're not as effective as a one-to-one -one approach. And, um, you know, line, obviously, that's, that's going to backfire because pe people will go to the internet and talk about you, and it's going to become a huge mm -hmm. mess if, if you're ever found out. So, um, you know, I, that really resonated with me. And, you know, beyond Reddit, I mean, you're an expert in a lot of PR um, and marketing tactics. I mean, you've, you've been the, the voice behind uh, the Vlasic brand, behind Miss Butterworth, and, you know, throughout these different projects you've worked on, I'm sure you've learned a lot of great PR lessons and marketing lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where, where do you see the future of PR going, going to and the future of marketing? What are some of the, the, the updates or new things that are happening that you're, you're most excited about as we're going into this uh, 2014 year? I think the key word in, in reference to what you're discussing is um, there's a lot of evolution going on. There are a lot of core principles to public relations and marketing that we've been talking about for a long time, like the focus on content, the focus on visuals, the focus on storytelling, um, the focus on the customer, and all of those are still true. They're just going to evolve to become even more important. Uh, with RBB, we just put out a white paper uh, called The Customer Factor, which is all about how important and how increasingly important the customers are to your business on the bottom line. Uh, I think the statistic is that 88% of people will go online to share their thoughts about a product or service. That's an unprecedented huge amount of people who are out there talking about you, and you have to be prepared to, to, to listen to them, to respond, um, to be aware, to be conscious of their needs. Um, because like you were talking about, we don't just spam and post stuff out and broadcast. It's not about that. It hasn't been about that for years, especially since social media really blew up for brands. The customer is the focus. The customer is number one. And the fact that they're on different social networks means that there are different places where you can serve them. That's still the core of customer service. And that is still that is going to continue to be a, a huge focus uh, for marketing and public relations. Um, and then on the content side of things, the importance of storytelling. Like I went to South by Southwest uh, this past March and that was my favorite session, and the one of the themes that continued to run throughout the whole time that I was there was this focus on storytelling and visual storytelling. This whole idea that you have a through line, that there's a narrative that you're telling of something that's compelling, and what makes people really get invested is that human element, right? That 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 there's something that you can follow along, something you can attach to, you have an emotional attachment to it, uh, something you can relate to. Um, for example, I went to a session with Coca-Cola and they talked about how they turned their corporate website, which at the time had just been like information about Coca-Cola, into Coke Journey, uh, which is now, a, if you go to their corporate website, it's focused on stories. And stories that don't even really have to do with Coke all the time. And that's an interesting part of how content marketing continues to develop, especially on the, on the storytelling front, is most of the content isn't necessarily going to be about you as the brand, but it can be about so many other things. If you're an AC repairman, you know a lot about ACs, and I promise you, if you start posting about some of those different aspects of it <laughs> that only you know about, someone's going to be interested in that. It's a lot yeah. like what we were talking about before with Reddit with uh, the AMAs or the little niche communities. There's like mm -hmm. these unique things that, uh, according to what you do, you have insight on that would be great to share. 
So there are so many different stories that you can tell from your customer's perspective, from what you do on a daily basis. It's not just about here are our talking points and here's what we do. It's this is how we live. These are the stories we have to tell. The probably like sub point to that would be adding in a visual component to that. You know, whether it's video or with photos, because the human brain is just wired to respond to visuals. And if you look at all the major social media platforms, including Twitter most recently, which just, which just redesigned their website mm -hmm. and gave more prominence to photos on news feeds, um, everything is just kind of going in that direction. That's just what clicks. There's a reason Instagram is so popular and that Facebook bought it for as many billions of dollars that it did. So those are some of the, those are some of the trends that, that I've been kind of seeing work and that we've uh, you know, applied for ourselves and our clients. Oh, that's awesome. And what are some of the things that you were leaving in the dust, right? So PR is always evolving. Things are, are coming new, but there's some tactics that are just not effective anymore. You're not recommending them, and you, we used to do them a lot before, but now it becomes almost you know not so not a good investment of our time or, or effort. So what are some of the, the PR techniques that you would say that are, are almost fading away or are losing their effective evolve into this new form of marketing PR? On, on the on the social media front, um, there used to be a lot of you know articles and things and recommendations that we would make in terms of getting the community to grow and asking in, in your actions like, oh, do you agree with this? Like this post, yeah. comment on this post. Yeah. It was very self-serving. Mm -hmm. And I think now that um, the social networks like Facebook, who has their own algorithm, have kind of like seen the trends going. They've made adjustments to the algorithm where it's based on engagement. And over time, now that users have just gotten accustomed to seeing and to having so many interactions with brand, they can kind of see through the veil of mm -hmm. what's going on. So if you're going on there and saying like, like this, uh, there you know there's a tendency to have some more resistance to that, or it doesn't pop up as much on news feeds because it's so self-serving. Nice. Um, so that part of it has started to kind of fade away. Um, there's a there's a great Facebook page. Uh, I think it's called. Condescending corporate page. Yes, I'm. A, I'm you know a fan of that, right? And they're they're <laughs> perfect examples of what not to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, also, just working in silos. That's that's definitely falling away. You can't have your traditional, um, you know, team who's working on press releases and who's working on media outreach work independently of your digital and social teams because they're just they're they're blended like. Yeah. One cannot work without the other. You know, they absolutely support and promote each other in very positive and very successful ways. Um, you know, just going back to the, well, not going back, I actually just thought of uh, mentioning that, you know, the concept of social PR, you know, in terms of what is the modern press release and what is modern public relations. It's engaging and going out with people and actually having conversations about the stuff that you're writing press releases about, not just mm -hmm. blasting a press release. And, you know, and for us, we're an integrated communications agency at RBB. And we work very, very closely with our teams at all times to make sure that everything we do is optimized for social, right? Because not one size fits all. One particular press release over here is not the same thing you'd put as you'd share it on Twitter. Um, and there are different tactics per platform. It's a very multi-pronged strategy that we take whenever we're doing any promotions for ourselves or for our clients. So that whole idea of working independent of one another, just it just can't sustain itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, on the on the digital front, um, websites that are not, or rather, mobile experiences on the web that are not responsive to uh, multiple platforms. One of the one of the buzzwords that came out a lot of uh, came out of South by Southwest was this whole concept of omni-channel marketing, which is going to where your customers are, regardless of where they are, and making sure that you meet their experiences and needs in those places. So that's where the the omni comes from. Um, and kind of the, the thinking of, you know, we're going to have a particular campaign or promotion that kind of just operates here without thinking about the broader experience and putting yourself in the shoes of the customer, um, you know, rather than just yourself, that, that just obviously can't sustain itself either. Um, if you think about, you know, where people do their activities like shopping, someone can just as quickly do it on their on their smartphone and then mm -hmm. go finish it on their computer. You know, if you're an e-commerce company, you want to accommodate for for that ability, that fluidity to go from one to the other. So, those are those are a couple of things I think that well, that's, that are that's 
that's an awesome list, and I think the one that really stands out to me the most is, is the silo one because I, I talk to a lot of communication directors and marketing directors, and many times I ask them, hey, hey you know, do you work with a PR team? And yeah, yeah, but I, I don't really know what they're doing. And I'm like, what? Are you crazy? Are, you know, <laughs> how, do you know how much marketing and PR that before where there used to be a wall? It used to be very separate. You know, now that that wall is down, and you, you have to collaborate if you really want to be able to to get the best results and, and reach you know your audience in the way that that uh, you desire. So I, I, that's a huge one. That I it surprises me to see still how many companies have it so separate instead of taking the approach that RBB takes and and the the future of the the evolving companies, which is the integration and everyone being on the same page or as close to it as possible right. uh, to maximize opportunities. Yeah, and I think that comes to, to your point. Is it, it, it's it's easier said than done, to be honest, at the end of the day, because yeah. there's, you know, for the past couple of years, like, it's been kind of standard practice. Like, there are some people who don't understand online and social, and then there are some people who don't understand the traditional side. And, you know, we kind of work in our own fields and we, and we make it work. But when you start to bring them together, you have to accommodate for older styles of thinking, newer styles of thinking, and finding the middle ground and really collaborating. And collaborating is, is something that requires compromise, that requires understanding, and being willing to learn new tactics, new strategies, new thinking. Or, in, 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 in look at it the other way, how old strategies and old ways of thinking can be updated and um, still a fit mm -hmm. for an integrated communications opportunity. It's just, it's easier said than done, but it's Absolutely, the way that things should be should be done. I mean, that's how how we feel here. Right. Yeah. I. I. Man. Thank you so much, Rafael. I've learned so much uh, on our uh, hangout today. You know, first of, of Reddit. You know, I'm so happy to uh, to have gotten some great insight from you on you know the do's and do nots and uh, going into some of the future trends for marketing and PR. You know, took some notes on, on things that we should be uh, expecting and things that we're seeing the trends that we're seeing already. And then finally wrapping up with uh, things that we should maybe uh, overcome or abandon uh, because they're not best practice. So you know, I really appreciate you making time to, uh, to hang out today, and uh, thanks for all your great insight. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor, and it's always fun to talk with you, and I'm, I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity. So thank you yeah, so much. I expect for you to be one of the uh, top 30 to watch the most important <laughs> people, right, to watch again in uh, 2014. <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed. We'll see, man. All right, man. Well, have a great rest of the afternoon. Thanks again. You too. Thank you so much.